Can one earn a PhD degree without a doctoral dissertation? This mystery involves President Tsai Ing-wen of Taiwan and the London School of Economics and Political Science. Four hundred eighty thousand British pounds is at the core of the LSE thesis gate scandal. Have you ever heard of this research program office mm. here in LSE? No, no. Nothing as we do, um, we don't feel we have good Taiwan. Ms. Tsai Ing-wen says she received her PhD from the London School of Economics in 1984. However, no one could locate her doctoral thesis before 2019. We're putting the focus on Tsai, who is the current president of Taiwan. This is a topic that continues to turn heads. However, only one pro-opposition media outlet and a handful of YouTubers in Taiwan are brave enough to unveil the truth behind Thesisgate. Other news outlets have chosen to stay quiet on the matter even as discussions reach a boiling point online. Even Taiwanese citizens abroad are committed to unraveling the mysteries behind Tsai Ing-wen's degree. Interestingly, three scholars who supposedly share the same ideals as Tsai Ing-wen's party, the Democratic Progressive Party, have come together to uncover the truth behind her credentials. They are former president of the North America Taiwanese Professors Association and current associate professor at UNC Charlotte's Belk College of Business, Dr. Huan C. Lin, Tsai Ing-wen's former instructor at National Taiwan University College of Law, Professor Emeritus He Defen, and a former director of the Graduate Institute of Journalism at National Taiwan University, Professor Dennis Peng. LSC is a top-tier social science university. Would LSC deem a thesis like this worthy of a PhD? Even an amateur can see what's going on here. Professor Huan Lin published a report that unveiled several pieces of evidence which suggest Tsai Ing-wen never received a PhD. One key piece of evidence was the University of London's library insisting that it never received a copy of Tsai Ing-wen's dissertation. 107 people received doctorates from LSE in 1984, the same year Tsai says she graduated from LSE. Tsai's dissertation is only one of two that the library does not possess. The other missing dissertation belonged to a student that engaged in plagiarism. Therefore, that person's degree was revoked. When presented with this evidence, Tsai Ing-wen responded by suing the three scholars for defamation. Recently, there have been false speculations regarding President Tsai's doctoral dissertation. The Office of the President would like to respond and offer some clarification. In 2016, after President Tsai was elected, LSE congratulated President Tsai publicly on their website. This is a reissued copy of President Tsai's degree from LSE, which she applied for in 2015. 
This document bears the school's seal, proving its authenticity. Moving forward, we have decided that we will take legal action once we have prepared the necessary documents. I don't understand why these professors insist on questioning my degree. They did suggest that I submit my degree for judicial inspection. In that case, I'll take legal action and have the judicial system settle this issue in its entirety. When faced with such strong evidence, the presidential office's only response was to sue. It was an attempt to turn the tide of public opinion. However, on the same day the presidential office announced their intention to litigate, then-legislator Apollo Chen struck a devastating blow. He discovered that all documents related to Tsai Ing-wen's time as a professor at universities in Taiwan were quietly classified and designated as top secret. They can't be declassified until December 31, 2049. One can't help but point out that if the reissued diploma Tsai applied for in 2015 was indeed valid, then she could simply have it authenticated by authorities in the UK. That would silence any questions over the validity of her PhD. But why did she have to settle for a photocopy of her 1984 diploma archived at the school? Isn't that strange? Is a photocopy more convincing than an authenticated diploma? Furthermore, the presidential office produced an old memo used to notify Tsai she passed her doctoral defense. However, this memo had no signatures from anyone. The office of the president has yet to offer an explanation for any of these inconsistencies, even today. The presidential office also presented Tsai's student records, but these offered more questions than answers regarding the authenticity of Tsai's credentials. Something amazing has come to light. On the bottom of her student record, there's a space where administrators can make remarks. Here, the remarks say something very interesting. This is a big secret Taiwan has been hiding. Taiwan's president once withdrew from her doctorate program due to financial difficulties. November 10, 1982. Here it says WD. WD is short for withdrawal. Now withdrawal can have many meanings. You can withdraw from anything, a class, a course, a program, or even a school. Here, withdraw from course is best construed as withdrawing from the school's PhD classes right in the middle of when Tsai would be writing her dissertation. It's a well-known fact that Tsai's family is quite wealthy. It flies in the face of logic to think that she withdrew from university due to financial difficulties. In response, the office of the president had this to say. Some people have brought attention to the remark WD from course written at the bottom of President Tsai's student record. WD from course means she simply dropped a class. She did not withdraw from the PhD program. I'll clarify. By February of 1982, President Tsai had already completed her two years of prerequisite study as mandated by the school. It was then that she became eligible for LSE's PhD program. Going back to President Tsai's record, she was already enrolled in the school since October of 1980. So she did not need to re-enroll, nor did she have to retake any required courses. If you look closely, in November of 1982, President Tsai received authorization under the guidance of her advisor to withdraw from said classes. The presidential office's explanations were insufficient. In fact, they drew the attention of Dr. Xu Yongtai, who earned his PhD in economic history at the University of Oxford. Dr. Xu took a trip to LSE so that he could read Tsai Ing-wen's doctoral thesis, which had been sent to the Women's Library at LSE on June 28, 2019. He was only allowed to read the thesis. He was not allowed to copy from the text. Dr. Xu published an article in the Chinese-language U.S.-based newspaper World Journal on September 18, 2019. In the article, he shared his thoughts about Tsai Ing-wen's dissertation. Xu raised several questions regarding the thesis. Firstly, this thesis, supposedly written in 1983, was rather rough overall. Not only that, but the way the thesis was formatted indicated it was composed using technology available only after 1984. There were remnants of handwritten corrections and traces of whiteout. 
The thesis also used American spelling rather than British spelling, which is unusual for the London School of Economics. These factors all pointed to one thing. This thesis was written and put in place after 1984. As more and more scholars began casting doubts, Tsai had no choice but to face the issue in front of the media. Tsai addressed doubts surrounding her doctoral dissertation for the first time on September 19, 2019. The degree is absolutely real. It can't be faked. If someone has a PhD, then they certainly have a thesis. That can't be faked either. During this election campaign, I hope my opponents can focus on policy. They can even challenge our values. But they shouldn't employ fabrications to smear my character. It's not a good look for them either. Why did it take 30 years for the thesis to enter the library's records? There's also the matter of missing signatures and dates. The thesis was written 35 years ago. Back then, they had different methods. If you judge the thesis using today's standards, then many things will seem strange. However, when we wrote dissertations back then, we adhered to the rules we were given. I think what's important is people don't doubt the existence of the dissertation, am I right? Some people say this thesis was made by combining shorter articles and papers. Some even say that your dissertation doesn't resemble a dissertation at all. I think that the people who say such things are speaking about things beyond the realm of their experience. When they comment on something, it's best for them to remain cautious and stick to what they know. The rules say that the thesis can't be copied or used in citation. It says that everyone needs to agree to those terms if they want to view the thesis. That I don't know. I would like to look into it myself. So you didn't set those rules? Of course I didn't. They said that you had a hand in setting the rules. I don't think so. Tsai Ing-wen's response on September 19th left a lasting impression on the public. Regardless of the authenticity of her degree, one can't deny that her demeanor and response were repetitive and suspicious. The public wanted answers. At this point, even someone who had no idea what a dissertation was before knew about ThesisGate. Four days later, the office of the president held a press conference. We've taken the time to unearth a copy of the dissertation the president wrote using a typewriter. I present it to you now. Afterwards, everyone can take photos of it. We've gone through countless reproductions. This document is a manuscript, meaning it is the original copy of the dissertation. The reason why this copy isn't bound is simple. Back then, the only way to reproduce a dissertation is by photocopying it. If you bind the manuscript, it would be very inconvenient to take apart if you wanted to copy it again. There was no way to save documents like you can on modern computers. We sent a copy of this manuscript to the LSE library. There are six pages missing from the copy at LSE. That's because there was an error during the transfer process. However, after thorough investigation, we find that different versions of the dissertation from other years contain the pages missing from the one at LSE. I will give everyone access to the documents in my hand, which is the first part of the dissertation. As soon as the presidential office offered up this stack of unbound musty papers, everyone was dumbfounded. When reporters asked for clarification, this was the answer they received. It's not some random stack of papers. It compiles into a complete work. We've explained this before. Honestly, I've unearthed countless boxes to find this dissertation. I rummaged through storage for a long time to find it. 
The copy of the dissertation on display at the Women's Library at LSC was sent there on June 28, 2019. It can't be copied or photographed without consent from the author. This so-called black leather-bound thesis could not win the public's trust. However, the presidential office had one more card to play during this press conference. The Evaluation Committee for the President's dissertation approved her proposed topic in January of 1983. By June of 1983, she turned in her dissertation. The President then completed her doctoral defense in October of that year as well. The University of London notified the President that she successfully passed her defense in January of 1984. From the approval of the topic to its completion, an LSE dissertation took only five months to complete. That, if anything, is unbelievable. On September 23, 2019, the presidential office held a press conference. Three people spoke on behalf of the office of the president, reading pre-packaged statements that failed to deliver any solid answers about the mysterious dissertation. In fact, inconsistencies presented in this press conference extended the thesis gate discussion by half a year. <laughs> You are looking at an image of the official doctorate degree conferred on President Tsai Ing-wen by the University of London on March 14, 1984. Copies of this degree are being kept at National Zhengzi University, the Ministry of Education, and the University of London's Student Records Office. You can see the school's name here. The Chinese translation of necessary documents have also been mailed to everyone. You can clearly see the degree indicates that the president has completed the requisite coursework and passed the necessary exams at the London School of Economics. It says here that the degree is conferred on Tsai Ing-wen and the document even bears the signature of the school's then-chancellor. According to the presidential office itself, copies of the 1984 diploma are being kept at the Ministry of Education and at National Zhengzi University. If that's the case, why was it necessary to acquire a diploma from the London School of Economics? Why did they continue to keep the files at the Ministry of Education and NCCU hidden? Why not bring out one of those instead of showing the people an image on a screen? The University of London clearly states on its website, we do not hold any copies. Dr. Huan Lin went one step further and contacted the school's diploma production office to verify this information. Again, the response was, please note, we do not provide scanned copies of award certificates for reasons of security and the prevention of fraud. The information published on the University of London's website and its diploma production office are consistent. This dissertation manuscript is 35 years old. Back then, there was no method of saving documents like there is with modern computers. This manuscript has been copied countless times, so you can see the effects of time on its pages. The thesis sitting in LSE's library was copied from this manuscript. That copy is missing six pages. That's because there was some error during the transfer process. However, after thorough investigation, we find that different versions of the dissertation from other years contain the pages missing from the one at LSE. The copy of Tsai's thesis sitting in the women's library at LSE is indeed missing six pages. However, after further investigation, it was revealed that this black leather-bound book was missing more than just six pages. In fact, this book didn't even have a conclusion, nor did it have a copyright page, which is standard for all doctoral dissertations. Even though the LSE Electronic Library already contained the dissertation's information in its system, it still indicated that the thesis was a personal copy. That begs the question, why isn't there information on the different versions of the dissertation from other years that the presidential office spoke about? The Evaluation Committee that presided over the president's dissertation approved her proposed topic in January of 1903. In June 1983, she submitted her dissertation. The president completed her doctoral defense in October of that year as well. In January of 1984,
The University of London notified the president that she had successfully passed her defense. This is a memo dated January 23, 1984, which says that the president submitted her dissertation in June of 1983. This same notice also says that she passed her defense, which happened in October of 1983. The memo says that the evaluation committee was very satisfied with the president's defense and dissertation. Therefore, they recommended that the University of London grant her a PhD. The memo says that an official letter would be sent out in February of 1984. The presidential office claims that Tsai's doctoral defense took place in the middle of October. After more extensive inquiries, our investigation team learned from a manager at LSE that the date of the defense was October 16, 1983. The strange thing here is, that date falls on a Sunday. How likely is it that a doctoral defense took place on a Sunday in the United Kingdom? Furthermore, the memo that the presidential office presented had no signature of any kind. In fact, that memo was very different when compared to other memos from LSE. Most notably, there were no signatures nor any comments from members who sat on Tsai's evaluation committee. Two pieces of evidence that serve to validate this dissertation have existed for 35 years. Firstly, everyone knows that in years past, you could look up President Tsai's dissertation on the British Library's thesis database. That's the first piece of evidence. The second piece is here. Professor Juan Lin went to LSE and flipped through the president's thesis himself. He then published a report about it online. On page 28 of his report, Lin says that on June 19, 2019, the school told him that according to their records, Tsai's thesis was moved from the University of London's Senate House Library to the university's Institute of Advanced Legal Studies at some point in time. Why doesn't the presidential office clarify when exactly some point in time is? During his investigation, Professor Lin discovered that this arbitrary point in time the presidential office was referring to was the year 2011. That year, someone indeed tried to sneak a copy of the thesis into the university's library system, but was rejected by the Institute of Advanced Legal Studies. Why is it that the presidential office claims that something that happened in 2011 occurred 35 years ago? Furthermore, the British Library's database didn't even house text from Tsai's dissertation until after October 2019. The absence of such key details begs one more very important question. Where were the different versions from other years the presidential office said existed at this time? Another question people are asking is why the thesis has so many traces of handwritten corrections as well as page formatting inconsistencies. 35 years ago, word processing software did not exist. This entire dissertation was written page by page using a typewriter. All of the page formatting and spacing had to be configured manually. It was difficult to stay consistent back then. If word processing software existed, everything would look neat and tidy, correct? Well, the imperfections in this thesis prove that it was a product of its time. LSE records show that President Tsai passed her doctoral defense right away. The professors that sat on her evaluation committee did not request she make any changes to the content of her thesis. However, they did ask her to correct some of the misspellings that were in her dissertation.
Whether or not typewriters from 1983 can write neatly and stick to a cohesive page format is subjective, no matter what the Office of the President says. Regardless, Professor Yen Zhengsun of National Zhengzi University managed to identify 444 misspelled words in Tsai's dissertation. Furthermore, he found that the thesis employed American spelling, non-consecutive page numbers, poor paragraphing, and even instances of the advisor's name being misspelled. The presidential office actually expects the public to believe that an evaluation committee overlooked so many mistakes in such a poorly constructed thesis? Another voice, this time from Taiwan's legislature, also began casting doubt on Tsai's credentials. When an opposition lawmaker questioned the Minister of Education, he got a response that opened an entirely new discussion. Mr. Minister, can I have them? I asked for them on July 19th. I was able to obtain documents that won't be declassified for another 30 years. So why is it that I can't access a photocopy of a diploma which the school said it will keep for 50 years if not longer? I, as a lawmaker, cannot access those files. Mr. Legislator, I think I know where you're going with this. I think that what the Education Ministry has provided so far is sufficient. Mr. Legislator, you ask me if I feel any pressure from this issue. There is no pressure. I have absolutely no pressure because if the thing in question exists, then it exists. What's out there is out there. If it doesn't exist, then we would have nothing to offer. Mr. Legislator, you made the request. I should have been given it before this date in July, when I asked for the files on July 19th. That was the same day that the presidential office announced that it found her promotion documents and you can find it wherever. This seems too well orchestrated to me. You give me files and suddenly the education ministry holds a press conference while the presidential office finds the documents. It's all because you're prepared and ready for this. During a legislative committee meeting, then-lawmaker Apollo Chen questioned 48 university presidents who were present. He asked if they believed Tsai's thesis was real. Only six of them raised their hands in agreement. Something interesting happened in the lead-up to Taiwan's presidential elections. Fewer people believed in Tsai's doctoral dissertation. Many of her supporters chose to stay quiet. The voices that demanded a public response from Tsai grew louder and louder. One hundred and seventy-five PhD degree holders held a press conference and released the following four points. One, even after the Education Ministry's repeated announcements, they remained skeptical over the validity of Tsai's PhD from LSE. They would pursue legal action to find the truth. Two, documents related to a professor's tenure should not be a government secret. On what grounds are Tsai's documents kept secret until 2049? 3. The foreign ministry should publicize President Tsai's travel history at Taiwan's border between the years of 1980 and 1985. 4. The education ministry should launch an investigation to verify whether or not Tsai's work as a doctoral advisor during her time at National Zhengzi University and Su Chao University were sufficient and up to standard. Shortly after this press conference, Taiwan held its presidential elections. Tsai Ing-wen won by a landslide. Since then, Tsai, the education ministry, and the presidential office have gone completely silent when it comes to questions surrounding the dissertation. In Taiwan, thesis gate has become a dichotomy of faith and skepticism. But the questions remain. Is the dissertation real? Is the diploma real? We refuse to let those important questions fall by the wayside. Both sides of the argument are suing the other for defamation. If Tsai's degree is illegitimate, then she must be held accountable for fraud, forgery, corruption, and more. Even her legitimacy as president must be brought under question. As May 20th, the date of Tsai Ing-wen's inauguration approaches, the presidential office is mobilizing resources comparable to that it is dedicating to fighting the Wuhan coronavirus. 
It is getting ready to do battle against Thesis Gate. Next episode, we will reveal to you the evidence we uncovered when our investigative team went to the University of London.